Let's see. It's right there. You can't see. Good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to the Fearless Morning Show, where we are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. Must you take it? Try, Brenda. I know. She, she's getting it. Sorry, her name is not Brenda. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show, where we are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. My name is Yamitra Jojo Waddell, the only live past crazy special, so what better place to be than here with me? What am I getting? Um, glasses. They may be in my purse. I'm not sure. Whoa, where's all your stuff? I know. I empty out my pocketbook. Not, this, this is not emptying out. There's nothing in there. Then, then it's in there. I hope you got happy Friday, y'all. We made it to Friday. Oh, shit, thought it was Wednesday. I hope you guys are ready to get this morning started. Oh, no, that was not Brenda. That was Bob. That was Bob. So we give random people random names when we're driving. Hey, Bob. Hey, Tom. Jill. Hi, Brenda. Brenda. Lynn. Lynn. We give them random names. So people. Our car switching between Linda and Lucinda. Yeah, um, that's right. We can't really decide. We can't really decide. So, um, uh, it's okay. Factor. It's alright. Uh, I hope I hope you guys watched the show yesterday. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched, if you missed the show yesterday, I talked about what do you do when you absolutely don't feel like doing anything. Like, you know, when everybody tells you you always got to be up and motivated and on 10,000, you got to be ready to go. What happens when you don't, dog, you don't feel like it? And you don't want to. And ain't nothing nobody can say that's going to make you want to do that. What do you do? So check out yesterday's show. If your friends and family do not have Facebook, we do have a YouTube channel where you can binge watch all the Fearless Morning Shows over there. Hand me the t-shirt. Um, the Fearless Morning Shows over there. And then um, for those who, um, you know, I'm always talking about I Am My Sister's Keeper. So here is I Am My Sister's Keeper t-shirt. And it has the hashtag on the back. Those those are available at livepastcrazy.com so that you can get you one of the t-shirts. All right, so the fill is for the day. Rosie said something a while ago, like just a minute ago. <sighs> and in country time, a while ago could be... From right now until when you were born. Till when I was born, correct. So a <laughs> while ago. Do you want to go while it's raining less or you just want to hang out here? I so I kind of want to hang out. I'll tell you what Rosie says because I think she wants to hear what she said. So I'm riding. I still have. I know. I still have pin curls in my hair. You want to come over here, Rosie, and say good morning? And so I had pin curls in my hair. And Rosie said, um, let me read her exact words. When are you going to acknowledge what's under there as she touched my hair? Okay. Miss Margaret said Why'd good you morning. Say it like that. Because that's how you said it. Your grandmother said good morning. Miss Margaret said good morning. Good morning. You almost weighed my face off. <laughs> like, this is how close you was to my... I felt the wind off your fingers. <laughs> and I was like, Rosie, that's so good. So Rosie said, when are you going to acknowledge what's under there? And she touched my head. And I was like, Rosie, that is so good. When are we going to acknowledge what's up under there? All of our crazy, which was kind of part of my thought process on Wednesday. But Rosie said it so much better. Come through 14. Give me a five. Yes. When are you going to acknowledge what's under there? So that's Rosie's fearless thought for the day. That is her quote for the day. Let's put your name out beside that. So when I quote you, honey, I got it right. Is that? That's your name. Why you just put R? That because I R. I know who you are. Yeah, you read. Go while it's not raining. Okay, Rosie's hair. Rosie's hair is straight and it's nobody, raining. I'm not. I don't. I just. I don't want to talk to my friends. Uh, well, you can hang out with me. I'll drive you up there. All right, no, guys. No, I don't want you to drive me up there because then you say stuff. It's except. Except doesn't have it. Is that two C's? It is. It looks like an X. What is that? So the days fill the style in conjunction with Rosie's. And Rosie's is when are you going to acknowledge what's up under there? 
and I think we all can take that to heart. When are we going to acknowledge the crazy that's up under what we think we are presenting as normal? Because sometimes we think we're presenting something as normal when we're not. Your grandmother said, go, Rosie. You Did you say, hey, grandmother? Yes, hey, grandmother. Um... You want to show them just lovely hair this morning? All of this just thickness going on. And she slung it in my face yesterday morning as she was getting out of the car. I did? Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. You're not sorry. That's okay. Not really. So the fearless thought for the day is, take that with you. Go ahead and drink it all. Be willing to accept the possibilities of your blessings. And you have to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing. That's my thought. So you have to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessings. You have to be willing to accept the possibilities of your blessing. Don't spell Spe it wrong in one place and right in another. I think you spelled it. Those are two C's. It just looks like an X. Oh, yeah, they are two C's. Uh-huh. And what that simply means is sometimes we pray and y'all, I don't make fun of people who pray. I pray daily, constantly, but we pray, Lord Jesus, because, you know, we get dramatic with our prayers when we want the Lord to. But can you scratch right there when we want the Lord to bless us and scratch harder and we get dramatic when we want our prayers to be answers and. We're asking for a sign. Lord, give me a sign. We're asking for an answer. Lord, give me an answer. And y'all know my thing. Sometimes we have more faith in the fact that things will always be wrong. I have more faith that I'm always going to be broke. I have more faith that I'm always going to be in this crazy relationship. I have more faith that I'm always going to have this crazy job. I have more faith that I'm never going to have gas money. I have more faith that I'm never going to have food. So you have more faith in your lack than you do in the God you're praying to. So why are you wasting your breath praying if you have more faith in your lack? Because there's no room for him to work. So you're praying him, Jesus, give me a miracle. Bless me so that I don't have to live like this. But as soon as you finish your prayer, you speak and acknowledge to your lack. I always have less than. I'm always broke. I never have. This is where it's always going to be. And you are constantly giving faith and affirmation and reaff reaffirmation, reaffirming the negative in your life. But you're not reaffirming the positive. So here's my suggestion. Why waste your breath praying when you don't have faith that your prayer is going to be answered? I think that's a valid question, don't you, Rosie? Because if I'm going, if I, it's inside out, if I'm going to waste all of my air praying that God make a difference in my life, but then in that same breath, I'm going to say, never mind, Jesus, because I know I'm always going to have this lack. Jesus is probably saying, why are you praying to me then? You asked me for a miracle, but because you're so busy holding on to your lack, I can't give it to you. Love you. Be peaceful. Love you too. Have a great day. Okay, you too. So, Rosie says goodbye, everybody. So, we're so busy acknowledging our, <clears throat> our lack that we have no room and no time to acknowledge the abundance that is there or the blessing that is there. And so that ties in with the fearless thought for the day. You have to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing. You have to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing. Meaning you got to say, okay, I asked for a blessing, right? And if you're asking for something, it's always going to require an action. They go hand in hand. So I can't pray to God to give me something and then I not do the work of the answer. Because prayer is working. Prayer is a verb. It's an action word. It means movement. It means doing something. So I have to first be open to understand that I've got to be willing to to accept my blessing. So if I if I can't even comprehend that there's a blessing coming, 
I'm not open to under understanding what my blessing is. So first, your mindset has got to be, um, I'm open to, I can understand that I've got to be willing to accept this blessing. So if you can't even comprehend why Jesus would even bless you, then you can't be accepting your blessing. You will never accept your blessing. You will pray the same prayer every day of your life. If you're praying, this is solely my belief. And who am I besides Jojo from the country, Union Mills, Forest City? I'm truly nobody. I am simply my sister's keeper. I am a seed planter. I hope I'm saying something that at least makes you think that wants you to take an action and do something different than what you are currently accepting. Because if what you're currently accepting is not working, then perhaps what are you what you're currently accepting is not right. And so you might want to look at other thought processes to change that around. So you've got to be willing you have to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing. So if I can't comprehend that Jesus wants to bless me, then I can't be willing to accept his blessing. Does that make sense? If I pray, God bless me, Lord, help me live past crazy. Lord, change my situation. And that's my prayer. Lord, I don't want to. I want my own house, Jesus. I don't want to live here no more. But then my faith is in I'm never going to own a house because and I can list out the reasons why I can't have something, but I'm not listing out the reasons why I can. Then my, I'm not open to receive the blessing that I just prayed for. I'm only affirming the negative in my life. So I've got to be open to understand that I can receive it and then I can have it. And then I have to be willing to accept it because nine times out of ten. The answer that you're looking for, this is it. It's right here in front of your face. It's always been there. But if you're not willing to accept it, you can't see it. You can't understand it. You can't welcome it. You can't grasp it. You can't hold on to it. It's slipping through your fingers. It's always gone. It's like a mist. It's never there. And, and, and you're dumbfounded because you don't understand. It's because you're not open to understand that you've got to be willing to accept your blessing, your abundance, to live past crazy, whatever other words you want to put there. The answer is there. So confessions and conversation, I want to buy a house, right? I want to buy a house. That's no secret. And I used to think I could never buy a house. And I kept saying, Lord, I want to buy a house. But guess what? I kept looking for places to rent. Lord, I want to buy a house. Guess what? I never worked on my credit or paid attention to my checking account. So... There you go. Lord, I want to buy a house, but I listed every reason why I couldn't have one. Lord, I want to buy a house. I don't make enough money, so I never went and got a better job. And I had more faith in the fact that I was never going to have one than I did in the prayer that I was just praying and I was asking for. And so once I became, once I understood that I have to be open and willing to accept my blessing, then my habits change because there's always going to be an action required. Then I started checking my checking account. Then the, the um, bounce check fee stopped. Then the credit score went up. Then, you know, I wasn't renting this home and that home to get better. I stopped and became stable in what I wanted to achieve. Sometimes, guys, your words are simply useless. It is your actions alone that are going to make the difference, your action and your mindset. And if they don't go hand in hand, it's going to be difficult. And you may have to work one more than the other. Like it, you may have to work your mindset first. And y'all know I'm a nerd. So here it is. It is harder. If you've been complaining your whole life, so when you first wake up and the first thing out your mouth is a complaint. So if you complain about everything and you're never happy about a thing, you never eat a good meal, you never been, every time you go somewhere nice, oh, it could have been better, you complain about that. If you put on some clothes, oh, it could have been this, you complain. So if all you do is complain, it is harder for you to stop complaining than if you were on a drug. It would be easy if you were on cocaine for you to come off cocaine than it is for you to stop complaining. So you're, you're going to be fighting a hell of a battle with yourself to stop complaining. 
But that's when you got to be bound and determined. That's where your uh, affirmations have to come in. That's where your self-talk has to come in. So that as soon as you have that negative thought, as soon as you want to complain, you be like, no, I can't. I'm not complaining. And you replace it with a positive. And you have got to self-talk that thing out. If you do not, if you don't change it, your situation will never change, my sister. I am my sister's keeper. I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I have lived, what I have seen, my own personal. Until you stop it, it's not going to change. It's just not. And as Rosie's quote for the day, the quote for the day comes from Rosamond Yanmitra. When are you going to acknowledge what's under there? Even though she was talking about the pin curls under my hair. But when are you going to acknowledge the crazy up under there when are you going to acknowledge that you have more faith in your lack when are you going to acknowledge that you don't think you deserve the blessing that you asked for when are you going to acknowledge that you are always shortchanging yourself so that you can always have the story that you have less than because life gave you less than instead of changing a story that maybe you're a willing participant in it on this rainy friday Friday, Freedom Friday. I hope that's something for you guys to think about. You got to be willing to accept the possibilities of your blessing. And you've got to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing. If you're not open to understanding it, it's not going to happen. If you don't think you deserve it, I, I can tell you all day, but you'll never receive anything anybody has to say you're never going to receive the love anybody has to give you you're never going to receive the affirmations you're never going to receive the positive feedback you're never going to see the gift the friendship everything to you will be shady all the time you will you're going to second guess every relationship every friendship and you're going to want to assume people are there to take from you when they are truly there to give to you because as rosie said when are you going to acknowledge what's up under there when are you going to acknowledge that? And then when are you going to be willing? When are you going to be open to understand that you've got to be willing to accept your blessing, your abundance? Because we pray for that thing all day long. We pray for it. We ask for it. And, but we're, we have more faith in that things will go wrong than we do and things will go right. So I'm just saying. You got to think that thing out. I hope I've said something that planted a seed that later on the day is going to make you think and or take action. I'm not the smartest girl in a bunch. Again, I'm from Forest City. I'm from a little country town, Union Mills, played in the woods, played army, jumped out of trees, read books. Hey, I used to lick the salt off the <laughs> off the meat in my grandpa's smokehouse. <laughs> they used to take eat the apples off the trees, pick the flowers out of Miss Twitter yard. I'm just a country girl, but I'm telling you some things that I know. And who am I to be telling you anything? But I, here's what I believe with with my whole soul that I am my sister's keeper. I believe that now that if I know something different, I have got to share different because there's a sister out there that don't know young old in between information is information that's what i had to come to realize it didn't matter how i got it as long as i got it i received it and i put it into action i don't and here's my thing i don't want you to leave this world here with the regret of anything sometimes we make up more excuses of why we can't than why we can and your excuse for why you can't doesn't even make sense to you but you work like hell to convince yourself that you can't but then you don't work like hell to convince you convince yourself that you can either and so here you are wanting to do better but again you're so hell-bent on saying that you can't that you never will and then my friend we will have, I don't want, I don't want you to have um, regrets. 
I don't want you to have a life full of regrets. I have plenty of them. And I'm, I'm at the point now where I don't want to live with any more. I refuse to live with any more. So that's the fearless thought for the day. The fearless quote of the day comes from Rosie herself. When are you going to acknowledge what's under there? When are you going to acknowledge what's under your crazy, your chaos? When are you going to acknowledge that perhaps you have more faith in your lack than you have faith in your God and your prayers that he's going to change things? And then the fearless thought for the day is you have to be open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing. You have to be open to understand that you got to be willing to accept your blessing. Great morning, Miss Valerie. Because if you're not open to understand that you have to be willing to accept your blessing because some of us don't even think we deserve it. So if we don't think we deserve it, then we're not going to accept it when it comes because we're going to assume it's not for us. And as Rosie's quote for the day, Quote for the day comes from Rosemar. When are you going to acknowledge what's under there? When are you going to acknowledge what's under your crazy? What's under your lack? What's under your bad attitude? What's under your faith in that? Your faith in that you're always going to have less than? Why do you think that? And until you have that real conversation with yourself, the blessings that you do receive will be fleeting. Meaning, you be like, Lord, you just blessed me with that and it's gone. You just gave me that money, but it's gone. You just gave me this, but it's gone. Because you have more faith that your lack will continue than you have faith that your blessing will continue. Yeah. Because if I don't believe that I, I can receive the blessing, I, I never will. I've got to be open to understand that I'm worthy of it. Number one. Then number two, I've got to, now that I'm worthy of it, okay, Lord, let me accept it. Because if my, if I'm always complaining and striving and striving, stri having strife and striving, if I'm always having faith that my lack is going to continue, where am I going to receive my blessing if my hand is always closed? You can't add to something where there's nothing there to add to. Where's the blessing going to go? Because all 10 of your hands, your whole body is locked up and accepting your lack. Your body is not open to receiving your blessing. Because when you're holding on to that negativity and that complaining, I'm a firm believer in energies. You can call it personality, the auras, you can call it whatever. But when you are so focused on your lack, everybody sees it. And nobody wants to bless anybody who is projecting lack and less than. No, nobody. And the good Lord is saying, girl, I'm trying to bless you, but you don't even think you deserve it and you ain't even willing to accept the blessing because the blessing is here. It is so in front of your face. It, it's like you can see it one minute and then the next minute it's gone. It's because you're not open to understand that you got to be willing to accept it. it, it it's that simple. And yet it's that hard. It is that simple, but yet it is so hard. So on this Friday, what are you going to do about that? Because y'all, I, I, I've got to accept my blessing. That means I can't hold on. I can't hold on to anybody else's negative thoughts. I can't hold on to anybody else. Me trying to live their life, fix their life, adjust myself around their life. I, I can't. I, I cannot because as my sister's keeper, as my brother's keeper, if I'm going to tell you something, I also have to model that. I got to show that and I got to work that out because now that I know I share and I refuse to leave this here world with any regret. I refuse to leave this here world full with what Jesus gave me. Y'all know, Minister Valley, can you please help me out with the scripture? I know it's in Matthew. I just don't know what chapters are in every Matthew, Mark, Luke, and uh, all the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, the talents. What I'm not fixing to do is have Jesus come back to me and say, Jojo, the least you could have did was put it in a bank and let it draw interest. Same thing with your talent and your willingness to receive your blessing. The least you could do is be open to receive it. 
The least you could have did, Jojo, was to know that you're worthy of it because you're my child. And if I created the whole world and I'm the king and you were created in my image and in the likeness of me, why are you not willing to accept that? The least you could do, Jojo, is accept the fact that you're my child and I'm trying to give you more. That's the least you could do. But we can't even do that. So don't you think that kind of hurt his feelings? That he trying to bless us and he's saying to you, you my child, boo. I'm trying to give you more. Think about your own children. When you try to give them something, tell them something, and they don't want to listen. How do, you, how do you feel about that? So imagine the good Lord. You got to be open to understand that you got to be willing to accept your blessing. It is that simple and yet it's that hard. When are you going to acknowledge what's underneath from Rosemond, a 14-year-old? That's the quote for the day. You know, she was talking about hair. It is so much deeper than that. When are you going to be willing? When are you going to acknowledge what's under there? When are you going to acknowledge what's under your crazy, your lack, your less than, your attitude, your mouth, your disposition, your personality? When are you going to acknowledge that? Because until you acknowledge it, my friend, accepting that blessing is going to become harder and harder and harder. Accepting that you need to do more is going to be harder. Thank you, Minister Valerie. Yes. There you go. I knew it was uh, what, what verse you... Man, I knew it was in Matthew. I have read that 14 through 30 so many times. And every time I get something different, like I have written so many notes and, and everything around that. Please go read that and tell me what you get from it today. Because everything that you need, he's already given you. Everything that you need to change your current situation has already been set up for you. It has been. You just got to be open to understand and willing to accept your blessing. Thank you, Minister Valerie. Please read that scripture today. Matthew 25, 14 through 30. And I'm a King James fanatic. I know people like NIV and they like uh, other versions, but I love King James. So, guys, what when are you going to acknowledge what's on? What, when are you going to acknowledge what's underneath there? And that's my 14 year old's quote for the day. So, when are you going to acknowledge what's underneath your lack? Why are you living in lack? Have less than complain? Why are you leading that way? And here's the thing: Yes, life have, may have set you up for some stupid stuff it sets you up for crazy but when are you going to acknowledge just like it set you up for crazy you can get past that because at some point y'all you we we all me included we've got to take responsibility that we like it like this because we ain't willing to change it so apparently we like it right that that's the bottom line here's the thought for the day you have to be open to understand that you've got to be willing to accept your blessing. If you don't think you receive, if you don't think you deserve it, then you're never going to receive that blessing at all. If you don't think you deserve a miracle that is for you, it's not going to come because you have more faith in your lack than you have more faith in the prayer you just prayed. And that has got. That has got to be the most, what's the word, Mr. Valerie? That's got to be the most hurting feeling to think that. It's got to be a hurting feeling to me to pray and be like, Lord, I know you're going to change this. And as soon as I finish praying, I say, Lord, you know, that ain't, that ain't never going to change. I'm always going to be broke. I'm always not going to have no money. I ain't never going to get out of this crazy marriage. I'm always going to live, stay in this, stuck, this low paying job. That has got to be a hurting feeling. Why are we praying when you want to accept less than? Why, why are you praying? What's, what's the point? If you have more faith in your lack, why are you praying? 
Because if you're not open to understand that you got to be willing to accept your blessing, what is the point of your prayer? What is the what is the end result of your prayer? Because if you're praying for a miracle to happen and something to come, right? But you have you have belief that it's never going to change. Then what? Right. You got to believe you did. Thank you, Minister Valley. It's called double minded. And what does it say about that? Unstable in all his ways. That means ain't nothing ever going to shift out right for you. It's just going to be fleeting. It's going to come and go. And it's never going to be your soul and your mind will always be searching for that thing. And you're never going to quite put your finger on it. And you're never going to quite put your finger on it because you're not open enough to understand that you got to be willing to accept your blessing. When you think that you can, you deserve to live past crazy, then you release some of that anger and that frustration. Then you are open and willing to accept your blessing. Because now you have something for it, somewhere for it to go. Because when your hands are closed in aggravation and frustration. Oh, hey, Lynn. That's right. You have to know that you know that you know. Period. And if you don't know, then you need some purpose partners. You need some friend circles, some prayer partners. You need some affirmations. You need whatever you can that's going to help you understand that yes, you deserve it. And it, it will absolutely make room for you. But if you're not open to understand that you got to be willing to accept it, there's nowhere for it to go. There's absolutely nowhere for that blessing to go. And Jesus said, the least you could have did was put it in the bank and let it draw interest. So with your gift, the least you could have done was acknowledged it. That's the least you could have done, right? acknowledge that you have a gift, you have a purpose, and you can't say that you don't have a purpose. You have one. It's just, are you willing to do the work to get to get there? You have a purpose. You were put here for a specific reason. I'm waiting on you to live out your purpose so I can do what I need to do. I am my sister's keeper, and we are all intertwined. We are all depending on each other. We are all depending on each other's gift. So that we can continue on. So we can do what we need to do. Y'all know my quote. Somebody's waiting on me to, to move. They will not move until I move. And when it becomes that urgent and that serious for you. I need you my sister. To move today. Because my life is depending on you. And the next sister who's not moving. Somebody else. Is her, their life is depending on her moving. We are all intertwined. And we've got to be willing. And open to understand. That we all have a purpose and a gift. And if you don't know what it is, take some quiet time. Be quiet with yourself and understand that you do have one. But once you know, please understand you got to be willing to do the work to get to it. That's all I'm saying. And the quote for the day comes from Miss Rosie. When are you going to acknowledge what's under there? Right. Exactly. Minister Valerie, that people absolutely, oh girl, absolutely. And why is that? Because we refuse to believe that we're great. My sisters, we are far greater, far smarter than we could ever imagine. And it is totally you that's going to change your family's life. It is you that your family is waiting on to take them out of poverty. It is you they are waiting on to make them see different. It is you they are waiting on to move them to a different state, to a different city, to get a different job, to make more money, to make it feasible so they can understand. Because some people have to see it here because they can't see it here. And it is you that's going to make that happen. I promise you it's you. You looking for the answer? You don't know? You kind of wishy-washy? It's you. I, it is you, girl. It is you. I promise. It is you. If your friends and family do not, do not have Facebook, we do have a YouTube channel. You can simply type in Fearless Morning Show and you can binge watch all the Fearless Morning Shows over there. Over 385 shows strong. Um, please make sure you go check them out. If you want to, I am my sister's keeper t-shirt. They are on the website. 
Sisters Keeper, uh, livepastcrazy.com so that uh, I have those in pre-order so that you can get your order and get your t-shirt. So please make sure today, guys, as Rosie's quote says, when are you going to acknowledge what's under there? So acknowledge your greatness. Please acknowledge your greatness. And then the thought for the day is you got to be open to understand. You have to be willing to accept your blessing. You got to be open to understand that you got to be willing to accept your blessing. And that simply means you got to know that you deserve it, my friend. You deserve the blessing that you're asking for. And as soon as you know you deserve it, stop speaking the lack and the less than. Speak the positive of it. And then you're open and you're willing to receive your blessing. Now there's room for it because complaining is taking up all the space of your energy, of your atmosphere. And if your atmosphere is cluttered because your words speak life, into the atmosphere and if your atmosphere is cluttered with words of doubt and death and destruction there is no room for life to come into that atmosphere i'm just saying and i'm not the minister here minister valerie is please seek her out with esther's purpose and get your whole life together over there check out miss valerie post your link down there to esther's purpose i'm just saying All right, guys, I hope this has helped somebody. I hope that I've said something that if nothing else makes you think that maybe there's a possibility for something different. And here's the thing, y'all. Like when I was coming out of crazy, like for real, for real, I I I didn't have none of this. What I had was the Bible, had a few sermons. I worked in a church, but I didn't have anybody to sit down and talk to me and show me the way. And so some of these things I developed on my own is what I learned on my own. And then I realized had I had somebody just to tell me one thing, to share one thought, one idea, maybe my process wouldn't have been so long. Maybe my journey wouldn't have been as hard. But then I realized I had to do that for a purpose so that I because so I could become my sister's keeper. So that I could share so I could become a seed planter that just I pray that I've said something that makes you think different from this second to the next. And then when you concentrate on that new thought, just concentrate on it for 10, 15, 17, 18, 20 seconds. Concentrate on what if just for 20 seconds, your mind will get excited and your body will start to react. Don't let no negative thought for them 20 seconds come in. For 20 seconds, I want you to think, yep, JoJo, I think you can do this. You need, okay. You can do this. I want you to think and understand, hey, yes, I can do this. I can make this happen. And when you know and accept that, then, my friends, change will come. I promise you it will. Y'all, like, I've been in everybody's parking space today. So I'm having to move so whole fast because we're the fearless morning show is on the move. But if your friends and family do not have Facebook, we do have a YouTube channel. Go binge watch the fearless morning show. Simply type in fearless morning show over there and you will see all 380 of our shows. Um, and so you can binge watch them. I hope this has helped somebody. Please make sure you share with their friend because sharing is caring because I am my sister's keeper. My name is Jamitra Jojo Waddell, the only Live Past Crazy Special, so what better place to be than here with me. All right, guys, I want you to have an amazing Friday. Um, I want you to have an amazing Friday. I want you to be well, be safe. I expect to see everybody here back on Monday morning, bright and early. At 7.15, I may be back this weekend. Don't forget, if you want I Am My Sister's Keeper t-shirt, go to livepastcrazy.com and you can order you a shirt over there. And don't forget, um, sign up for um, the Live Past Crazy journey so that you can go along with me. All right, guys, have a great Friday and I'll see you on Monday. Have a good one.